Okay, we are turning our reading to the Old Testament of Exodus, various parts of the 20th, 20th chapter. Can you all hear me? Hello? Yes? Okay. Just repositioning. Okay, there you go. All right, the 20th chapter of Exodus, various parts of it. Verses 2, 1 to 4, 7 to 9, and 12 to 20. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning of the sound of the trumpet, and the mountains smoking, they were afraid, and trembled and stood at a distance, and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. Pray with me. Mighty God, we come to you in your presence as the Israelites came to the mountain, as they saw and heard God. We come into your presence to learn about love as you give us the directions to know how to love you and love each other. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So as I mentioned earlier, today we begin our stewardship sermon series. As we enter into the fall season, we think of the harvest, Thanksgiving, and the reminder of the goodness and faithfulness of God. So for this stewardship theme, I chose the following verse from Psalm 100 that says, make a joyful noise, like we did today. We make a joyful noise. And we have this text from Psalm 100 that I invite all of us to pray. Not only read, but prayerfully pray and read. Let's read it together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, Worship the Lord your gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all of generation. So this week, you will be receiving a stewardship letter with a pledge card. 
And I know that's not the fun part, but the fun part with the letter is that you will find a, uh, a card that contains the words that we just read. It will be laminated so that you may use it in the future. I invite you to read it each day as we enter into this season to be reminded of God's goodness. Please use it to pray every morning for when we start our days with gratitude in our hearts, it gives us new perspectives for our day. As some of you know, this year has been challenging with the diagnosis of cancer, the ongoing challenges due to complications that will still require future surgeries. Um, so waking up each morning with gratitude when you're not feeling comfortable and weak, is, it's been testing, it's been a challenge each and every day. But I find that when I go into that dark place, I find myself searching for the light of Jesus. And the way I find it is when I fill my soul with gratitude. And I begin to go over all the blessings during these challenging times. I find that no matter what I face, what walls I face, there's always hope, which is a reason to give so much gratitude, that hope that never wavers. Whatever it is, the dark place that I may find myself, I find a glimmer of hope, and that gratitude can make any ordinary day into a day full of thanksgiving, turn mundane tasks into joy, and change everyday opportunities into blessings. And I pray that this prayer from Psalm 100 will do that for you as well as it does for me. For this year's Stewardship Sermon Series, I was led in my prayer time to focus on our church's mission statement. Do you remember what they are? It's really easy. It's on the screen every Sunday, but I wonder how many of us really pay attention. The mission statement is, follow Jesus. Can you repeat that? How do we do that? Love, grow, and serve. Today I will be focusing on love. Next Sunday is Laity Sunday, and I thought it would be appropriate to ask our current and previous lay leaders, Diane Clowder and Bob Garrett, to speak on the second part of our mission statement, Grow. And on the third Sunday, I will be preaching on the last part of the mission statement, Serve. And as I mentioned at the very, very beginning, October 29th, Consecration Sunday will be celebrated, and you're encouraged to bring your pledge cards. If you can, you can send them ahead of time as well. It would be a great time because what do we have right after service that Sunday? Potluck. What a great way to celebrate our Thanksgiving by bringing our pledges and going out to eat together. I think I need, I need to hear an amen. Amen? Amen. Yes. The 29th Consecration Sunday followed by potluck. So love, L-O-V-E, a word that covers so much in our culture, right? It is used so generally for loving items to be consumed, like I love pizza. Wearing, you know, uh, 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 items of clothing like jeans, driving a particular car. We use it to describe and distinguish between loving something and liking something. We even have a dedicated month of the year, February, to celebrate love on Valentine's Day. Yet, it is also a word that epitomizes our Christian belief. We speak of love when we describe the unmerited love of God 
We speak of love when we describe Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross. And today, I found it as a main theme in today's scripture in Exodus 20. Let's look at slide number two. And as you may have already noticed, this text delineates the Ten Commandments. The text begins with a powerful introduction. I am the Lord your God. This is a powerful introduction because it signifies that we are to pay attention. You say, catch on sentence, listen up. It is usually made during royal announcements, proclaimed so that all will perk up their ears and listen and pay attention. Such an introduction is made to dissuade the question that we may ask, who are you? Why should we listen to you? What is it that you have to say? Why do we need to listen to it? And the answer is, because God is Lord. Simple as that. And we are told these rules. Let's read it together. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of our Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall not do any work. These four commandments are usually known as the first table or the vertical commandments that govern our relationship with God. And the way I describe it the best is to look at the cross. Look at the cross. Do you see that vertical? The vertical alignment? That's our first four commandments. The vertical commandment, the vertical line that com connects us between us and God. It is the fulfillment of the greatest commandment that Jesus gave. Do you remember that? Love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Notice how these commandments put us and point us toward God. They are to provide the life of faith that is attuned to God. They emphasize that God comes first and the need to get our priorities right. We are to do away from anything, everyone, and everything that steers us away from God. We can spend immeasurable time on each of these individual four commandments, but for today's message, it suffices to say that love is spoken in these four, four commands, for they teach us that God is to be loved above all. That we are to show a love for God as we worship him alone. That the way we love and honor God is by not profaning his name. That we show our love in action as we set the Sabbath day as a day of worship and rest. Love is projected upward as in the vertical beam of the cross that I mentioned. Now we move to the next six commandments. In the first four, if the first four are known as the first table, the second set are known as the second table. If the first four commandments were directed to God in love, the second set is directed towards our neighbors and how we get to love them in fulfillment of God's command that Jesus taught us to love your neighbors and one loves our, yourself. So that's the vertical line. Do you see that? The, ver the, 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 excuse me, the horizontal line, the vertical line to God, and the horizontal beam that we see over there is for reaching out and bringing us together. It's a good visual to remember. As we see how love our neighbor is weaved, is, we see it throughout the six commandments. 
Let's read it together. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord God will, is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Let's look at these briefly. Each of them merits a lot of attention than the time allows us here. But look at the fifth one. It's the only one that is written in the positive. It is the only one that comes with a blessing. It begins with the closest relationship that we can imagine growing up, our parents. And then the circle of those who we are to love as oneself grows outwardly outside of our nuclear family. And it includes such prohibitions such as do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal. And the next one is the one that we need to see for what it is. Most people make it simple ban against lying. But notice that God's prohibition goes beyond an objective lie. But it goes even deeper. It says do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And I think that is the reason gossiping can be so detrimental for relationships because they are based on possible untruths. It's not just a simple lie that is objective. God does not want us to lie about others because that breaks relationships, that hurts people, and that's what God does not want. God cares that we don't lie about how much money we make, <laughs> but he also cares deeply that we don't lie about our neighbors. And then last, don't covet anything of your neighbors, not the house, not the spouse, not the car, not the greener lawns, or the newer fence. This is the one command that is compounded by various points. Do you see that? It's just not, do not cover your neighbor. It delineates everything else. Nada, nil, none of what belongs to others are we to covet. And all this... All this for the sake of love. Growing up in the church, I've always, I've always seen the Ten Commandments as something negative, something restrictive, something confining. God was only making me get up early in the morning to go to church on a Sunday when I should be sleeping in. God making me feel guilty for little white lies being told by a youth pastor that wanting the Jordash genes more than I wanted to pray to God was a sin. I saw the Ten Commandments as laws that were punish if broken. When broken. <laughs> and as I got older, I became more aware of why it is that the commandments were given to us. The laws were passed out of love. The law is not about me. It's about my neighbors. God loves our neighbors so much that God gives us the law. And in retrospect, God loves you so much that God gives your neighbors the same exact law so that love may abide. The Ten Commandments are not just laws to have to abide they're good news for you and for me. They're the good news that Jesus boiled down to two. Love God and love others. Covering the first four and the second six. So what does love 
What does love that the commandments teach us have to do with stewardship? A lot. As we saw in the commandments, the law given to Moses is expressed through love, which is freely given to all who will accept the forgiveness of sin. For as stewards, we consider all of God's abundant gifts, and as such, we are to consider love as part of that gift. We are to love God, for in loving God, we share the love of those whom God loves so much. We are to love our neighbors, yes, even those that we don't like, because by that love, we know our love of God. The currency of relationships, as Jesus tells us, is love. In applying stewardship to relationships, we should continue to be followers of Jesus who loves, grows, and serves. And as we have each other and with one another, we are the church that recognizes that love is what binds us, strengthens us, and sends us forth. We need each other to carry out that work of Jesus the Christ And we do this by investing our gifts that flows from God so that as a beloved community, we can grow to bless others. And we do this by putting God first in all areas of our lives, including our finances. Yes, our finances that are gifts from God. As we sing our next hymn after the message, consider how we are to seek God's kingdom first, and all the things that are needed will be taken care of. When we put God first, personally and as a church, we are acknowledging that Christ is the head of the church who calls us to be good stewards of all of our gifts, including our tithes and offerings. During this stewardship campaign, Prayerfully consider how we can grow in love of God and others as we trust with our offerings and tithes. Prayerfully consider the blessings from above and how we can live out the laws of love from God. Pray the prayer from Psalm 100 that you will receive and meditate on all of your blessings. We are, we are a church that God sends us forth to be the light of this community and into the world. We are able to do that when we put our trust in the God who gives us our ability to share the love of God and others with one another and the world. So this church needs you. This church needs all of us so that we may continue to be the messenger of that love to all. So prayerfully read the letter that will come to you. I know, I know, I know the tendency because we get an overload of mail and emails. And what is the tendency? Oh, another stewardship letter. Chuck Chuck it. I don't take it personally because I know I do that. But this time, take two minutes to read the letter and see how we are already loving and growing and serving each other and our community. It's in between the lines. You got to read it. And know how we are encouraged to even love more grow more, and serve more because we, we have that joy in our hearts that will not go away that God has given us in Jesus the Christ. And that's why Psalm 100 is picked out for us to know that we are to continue to make a joyful noise 
not just by our voices, but our deeds and our actions and our living out the Ten Commandments in love of others and God. As you pray this prayer from Psalm 100, I pray that you will find the joy of God that is bubbling in our hearts. For joy is part of the gift that God gives us as we continue to love, grow, and serve. Amen.